Hey, good morning, everybody. I just wanted to jump on here and uh, talk about... I wanted to talk a little bit about an experience that I had with writing uh, inventory, um, which is sort of like a journaling process out of the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous. And um, in the 12th, in the 10th step, they, they you know, ask us to um, write inventory um, you know, when things like resentment and fear come up and, um, actually it doesn't say right, but I write my inventory. Um, so anyway, I was remembering this experience that I had early in recovery. This was early in, in sobriety and recovery. And I was working at a diner and, um, I had come in on a Saturday to, I was a dishwasher, um, and they really needed somebody to cover busing tables And so I came in on a really busy Saturday morning and I remember them, um, everybody, all the waitresses and the owners of the diner always complained about how bad the bussers were. So I had this like determination to go in there and do a really great job, Uh, which is, which is a good motive. You know what I mean? Like, you know, at, at face value to like want to do a good job. So anyway, I went in on this Saturday and I'm, and it was just beyond busy. It's in this small, it was in, it's actually, it's like a diner that was in like a modular building. So it was really, really small. And like people are like lined up outside um, waiting to, to get in to eat. And uh, so I'm going around and I'm, you know, I'm taking the plates off the tables and put it in the bus pans and bringing them back to the dishwasher and just kind of really busy, busy, busy. And I passed this table and, um, one of the one of the uh, customers um, pointed at her coffee and and um, was basically like the the milk in this coffee is bad. I could see it curdling on the top of the coffee, so I went and grabbed the cup of coffee to take it off the table, and all of a sudden the owner of the diner, <laughs> this guy that was like six foot seven basically, is like standing behind me screaming at me and he's basically saying you can't do that and he's saying all this stuff and like the diner went completely completely silent um and like everybody was just kind of in like the customers me and everybody was just like really like shocked that this guy was like screaming at me in front of everybody and I kind of looked at him and I was like okay you know and like I had no idea like what I had done wrong you know what I mean and, uh, and I went back to the kitchen and I was just kind of like, oh my God, I was like, I totally want to punch this guy in the face. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, but anyway, I was like, I'm in recovery and I'm like praying about it. And like, I realized I finished out my, my shift and I'm going around, you know, finishing the, the shift. And, um, I know that like after my shift, like I have to write 10 step inventory, immediately you know what I mean like that's what being in recovery is and I know that like it's not about him it's about me you know what I mean and um so I I I finished my shift and I I went back I was living in a sober house at the time and I went back and I wrote inventory and um one of the things in 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 written inventory is um in a resentment inventory it asks you um you say what the person did who it is what they did and how it affected you and then you're asked to, to look at where you're selfish, dishonest, self-seeking, and afraid. And so I got to that, when I got to the, my part of it, I, I looked at it, at the selfish part, and I was like just staring at the, the paper, like, like thinking to myself, like, how was I selfish at all in this? I was there, you know, working really hard, and this guy starts yelling at me for no reason. And like, I literally like stared at the page for like, for like 20 minutes like I don't I don't know if I can write any way that I was selfish um so I did this thing that I, I had been told about sort of praying and relaxing and I did that and I kind of waited for for sort of an answer um and I what what came back was really profound it's why I'm telling this story um and it, it sort of it it um kind of demonstrates the power of inventory um what came back to me, and this is what I ended up writing for selfish. Uh, and by the way, when I when we write on our part of it, it doesn't mean like what the other person did was right. They can still be wrong. It's just me taking responsibility of my side of it. And I realized that that day, 
and this was my selfishness, that day I went to the diner with a selfish motive. So I went there not to go and be genuinely helpful, but I went there to impress everybody. I wanted to show them that um, I could do such a better job than the other bussers. And I was working hard, not because it was the right thing to do, but because I wanted to look good and I wanted to impress people. You know, when I was there working, it was like $8 an hour or something like that. It made me kind of feel like this big when I realized that. Um, and so the selfishness wasn't really directly related necessarily to the guy that was yelling at me and my something I had did, done towards him, but it was really in my mindset and, and sort of my motive for the day. And it had really nothing to do with him. And I, I just, it was just the most, it was one of the most profound experiences. So I'm doing this written process. I have this realization and the anger that I felt inside towards this guy just like completely melted away in the light of sort of seeing something about myself that has always been there, like this, this desire to look good and this desire to like impress people. And I was just like, why do I do that? Why do I have this need to look good to, in order? And, and really what it comes down to is I, I need this approval from others so that I can, I, I have this idea, and this is sort of the cognitive behavioral side of this. I have this idea inside of me that if, if you like me and you're impressed with me, that that's going to make me feel okay inside. And sometimes that does make me feel good temporarily, but ultimately that's not a long-term thing. And so it kind of, it's like this real realization. It was just from one instance of stepping back, writing in this you know, constructive practice of written inventory around a resentment that I got, um, that I would have never done this if I had never done the 12 steps, if never, nobody ever said to me, hey, Russell, like when you're upset, it's something about you. You know what I mean? Like I would never have done that. But, it, but moments like this piece of inventory have had this profound effect on my life that like I no longer walk, like I can see when my motive is to look good and to impress people and I just don't do that anymore and I just feel I feel better I feel more genuinely myself in life uh, I don't know how to ex to explain it but but that's from a written process that I learned in recovery that I had to do but something that's like has had profound effects on my life in terms of me increasing my self-awareness my my uh, introspection you know um, my insight around um, how I act and behave and uh, when I when I see those things about myself I'm more likely to change around them and I'm more likely to all these things happen I feel more comfortable in life I don't feel as stressed I don't feel the anxiety that the depression lifts it has this kind of electric effect in my life so anyway I was thinking about that this this morning and I just wanted to share that story um, it's a really profound experience for me. So anyway, hope everybody has a great day and we will talk soon. Thanks.